Alright everyone, welcome back to Pixar Nerd Studio. Anyways, um, we're going to be ranking Batman films. This was originally supposed to come out during DC Fandom, um, but I requested all these movies from the library. Uh, so, yeah, I don't have a HBO Max subscription. So, all of them came, except for frickin' Batman Forever, which took two months to come. So that's why it didn't come out around DC Fandom, and that's why it didn't come out around Batman Day. That's fun. <laughs> so I watched all of these movies in preparation for this video, so we're making this into an F tier. But none of the films are going in the F tier. You'll see why in a minute. Um, so the first film we have here is the Adam West film, which is going to go in A tier, because it's, it's just fun. <laughs> I'm a big fan of the 1966 Batman. Um, I've read all of the uh, newer comics that they came out that's a spin-off of the show. I've seen almost all of the episodes. I've seen the movie. There's nothing not to like about this incarnation of Batman. It's just fun. Um, there's also um, Cesar Romero's Joker, who's very, very close to the incarnation of the Joker in the comics at the time. Besides the fact that Cesar Romero had a mustache that they just painted over. <laughs> so, this is the only basic incarnation of the Joker that actually has a mustache. Which is, in my opinion, pretty funny. Um, next up, we are going from a campy Batman to a still campy but very dark version of Batman. Um, with the... Tim Burton reboot from 1989, which is also one of my favorites. I personally like Adam West better, rest in peace. Um, but this this film is good for what it does. It made Batman darker. Um, it's definitely uh, not my favorite Batman film, but it's still pretty good. The Joker that is in this film definitely reminds me of the Joker that's in the comics at that time, so we have the campy uh, comedian sort of Joker, and then we have the dark gangster sort of Joker um, that uh, the, the story that they decided to go with for this Batman film feels really natural and it flows nicely. I like how they had a younger version of Jack Napier, uh, Na Napier, who turns out to be the Joker, um, kill Bruce, uh, Bruce's parents. That's a great flow of progression through the story. So we have that going for it. That's that's a great part of the film. I actually really enjoy it. And then the comics did stuff with Jack Napier, like uh, Batman White Knight, which is also one of my favorite Batman stories, uh, with Joker uh, becoming sane and running for uh, an elected position in Gotham. So that that was a pretty fun story. So uh, if you like anything Batman, I'd recommend definitely checking White, Now, White, uh, White Knight out. That was a tongue twister. <laughs> Next up, we have Batman Returns, which is A, a name I don't like, and B, should be renamed to Batman. This movie is not for kids, even though it was marketed for kids. I, I I don't know how I feel about this movie. Like, the first one, you could definitely tell, was directed by Tim Burton. But there was not much that was most... Like, you couldn't tell that it was directed by Tim Burton because of how much... It just felt like a Batman film. Um, then, this one <laughs> has so much Tim Burton in it, and I'm not the biggest fan of Tim Burton. Like, I dislike Nightmare Before Christmas because it scared me when I was little and I still haven't decided to rewatch it. <laughs> um, his take on Alice in Wonderland, I really enjoyed. It was just a bit weird. Um, so, this one is... It's Batman, but it's weird. Like how Catwoman literally becomes a ninja because she gets pushed out of a window and dies and then cats reincarnate her as Catwoman. And also, this movie's technically connected to the Halle Berry Catwoman movie from 2004. You know, that might be a thing. <laughs> um, and then there's Penguin being a orphan who's 
parents literally decided to put him in the sewer because he was a mutated creature that only had two fingers on each hand. It, it's just... It's not my favorite incarnation of the two characters. It it didn't really do anything for me. It it's not that bad, but it's still it's okay. There's just some stuff in it I don't like. Next up, we have Batman Forever, which as the first of the two more toyetic Batman movies, I have to say it's not that bad. I'm putting it in C tier. Um it's inoffensive, really. Like, I think the most offensive thing that they did in this movie was cast Tommy Lee Jones as Harvey Dent. When this movie's supposedly supposed to take place in the same universe as this movie, where they cast Billy D. Williams as Harvey Dent, and they didn't bring him back for this film. So, I mean, that makes these this film completely in a different universe than this one, in my opinion. So... You know, the only thing that connects all four of these films is Alfred and, I believe, Commissioner Gordon, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I really like Jim Carrey in this film. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones' Two-Face felt just, just felt like the 1960s Joker. He was not too serious at all, and he just didn't feel like Two-Face at all to me. So, um, I really do like Chris O'Donnell's take on Robin, though. That was a pretty fun thing to see. Uh, the only dislike I have about it, really, is some of the action in it is a bit weird. And then there's the suit-up scene at the beginning, where they literally, like, they have a shot of Batman's butt, his crotch, his chest, his face. It, it just was so weird. <laughs> um... And then we have Batman and Robin, which has the exact same beginning and ending with the suit-up shots. And then it also has the same thing with the uh, three main characters now, because this one has Batgirl in it, running at the camera. <laughs> and it, it, it's just really bad. So we're, we're giving the same thing that I did for Amazing Spider-Man 2. We're having Batman and Robin. Um, we're having them be in, in its own tier. Batman and Robin is a very, very bad film. <laughs> like, um, we have like we have a great cast. We have um, George Clooney. We have Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of the best um, actors of all time, right? He's in Predator. He's in. He's Terminator, for crying out loud. I mean, seriously. He's been in some very good movies. This is not one of those movies. <laughs> it's just everything he says is an ice pun, which is not good when you're trying to make a superhero movie. It's just out of left field, and it doesn't feel natural for the character of um, Mr. Freeze. Because you're trying to do the... Batman the Animated Series backstory for Mr. Freeze where his wife is frozen which is a very depressing and serious backstory but they treat the character with such uh, disrespect in the film that it is just gross uh, next up we have Batman Begins which um, I like more than 89 um, I like the origin of Batman in this film I, uh, Christian Bale does a great job playing Batman and Bruce Wayne actually the only criticism I'm going to give the trilogy is uh, the Batman voice <laughs> it's 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 the Batman voice <laughs> everyone has criticized the Batman voice um, but for a realistic version of Batman that would fit in our actual world it, it does a great job um, I like uh, frickin' Liam Neeson as, uh, Raish, Raz, Raish, we're doing Raish, Raish Al Ghul, um, he does a great version of the character, um, I also like the Scarecrow in this movie, 
Which is weird because if you pay attention, Scarecrow's the only villain that's in all three of these movies. Who, who knows? <laughs> um, so, as the beginning to the movie, or to the series, it's a great uh, introduction. Then we have my favorite Batman film, which is The Dark Knight. Heath Ledger does an amazing version of the Joker. Um, it's not comic accurate at all, but I don't think anyone cares about comic accuracy when it comes to Heath Ledger's Joker, because he just does a great job. <laughs> There's nothing bad I can say about Heath Ledger's Joker. He's scary, he's funny, um, he's frightening at times. He's just a great version of the character. Like, there's so many iconic lines that you can have in this film because of Heath Ledger's Joker. Next up, we have my second favorite Batman film, Dark Knight Rises. It's a great end to the trilogy. Um, Bane is a great character. I enjoyed how they added Talia to this universe. It's a great fit uh, for the main villain of the film. Just like how I had to criticize uh, Christian Bale's Batman voice, I'm criticizing Tom Hardy's Bane voice a little bit, but it makes sense because of him wearing a mask, so, and also the backstory that they give Bane. It just was a bit hard to understand without subtitles. I like subtitles on all of my films, but it's neither here nor there. Um, so we have... Um, the only disappointing thing I really have is that this film was actually really long. It was about almost two and a half, maybe a little more than two and a half hours long. Which, I mean, it works. Uh, but they're definitely going for a more Dark Knight Returns uh, vibe in this film, which I like. Um, I feel that Dark Knight Returns is overrated, which is a very hot take. Um, but the way that they adapted it into this movie, I like. Um, so, this was definitely a very worthy successor to this wonderful Batman film. Next up <laughs> is this film. <laughs> it's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, which I like more than Batman Returns. <laughs> just like this film, uh, just like... Dark Knight Rises, um, Batman v Superman definitely also has a Batman based on Dark Knight Returns, with the costume basically being ripped exactly from that comic. And I enjoy the costume. I enjoy Ben Affleck as Batman. I know people criticize Batman in this film for killing people, but, I mean, <laughs> Michael Keaton's Batman killed people. <laughs> Christian Bale's Batman killed people. The only Batman that I can say for a fact did not kill people is Adam West's Batman. So, I mean... And then also 1930's Batman, like, snapped someone's neck every other issue. So, I mean... Why can't Batman kill people? <laughs> I mean, I understand why modern Batman doesn't kill people, but... This is definitely not a version, uh, I mean, it's supposed to take place in modern day, and, but I mean, for for this movie, um, I actually liked it better than I thought I would, because I've read all the reviews, and people were like, oh, this is a horrible Batman movie, it's a horrible Superman movie, I don't like the movie. They say Jesse Eisenberg's a horrible Lex Luthor. I enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed Jesse Eisenberg's Lex, Le uh, Lex Luthor. I normally don't like Lex Luthor. <laughs> He's just this big corporate businessman who only cares about business and destroying Superman. Him in this movie reminded me definitely of Heath Ledger's Joker, which is a good thing. <laughs> I really enjoy Heath Ledger's Joker, so um, I'm definitely giving it a B for beautiful. Uh, no, because it's in the same tier as this film, which is not beautiful. It's more frightening. <laughs> so, maybe big. It's very big. It's very ambitious for what it's trying to do, which is basically kickstart an entire cinematic universe. 
which we'll see how good that is when Zack Snyder's Justice League comes out, because they haven't really made a sequel to this film. Justice League 2017 doesn't exist. It's not a movie. It didn't happen. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, thank you for being so patient with me for uh, this video. I've been hinting at this one for a long time. I know that um, you guys want to see some more drawing videos as well. Uh, I have one in the works right now. I'm just very busy right now, so uh, if you could subscribe and hit the notification bell so you guys know when I next upload, that would be very helpful. Leave a comment about what your favorite Batman film is, and if you criticize me for liking Batman v Superman, I don't care. I like the movie. You can have whatever opinion about any movie you want. And I will see you guys in another video. Have a wonderful rest of your day.